After two weeks, two and a half weeks of working in a boat yard, we are finally ready to leave Sissy Mutes and head up north. Uh, we're all excited to get off the dock and we're ready to begin the expedition. Yeah, I think uh, we're lucky enough. It's always daylight up here in Greenland. Uh, so even though it's the evening, we can set out, gangway up, start the engine, raise the sails and uh, fair winds towards the north. All right. Let's get off this deck. Yep, yeah, let's do it. Bye. The ghost of Inuna, Belushudet, I don't go show. Nikin, Yaradin, Inuna, Rijavit, Rima. So the expedition has begun. We left out of Sissimut uh, at first 12 hours. We didn't see a whole lot of ice. But uh, the bergs started getting bigger and bigger the further north we got and the closer to Disco Island. Uh, by the time we were approaching Disco Island, some of the icebergs were like monsters and we had to sail right by them. We left out of Godhaven and uh, had very light winds and a little bit of sailing, sailed up Disco Bay to the northeast corner, up into a fjord to this area where we'll be deploying RBR's solo sensors. This project, uh, the primary investigator is Dr. Clark Richards at RBR. He is working directly with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, and we are the third party in this equation who are actually going in the field and deploying these sensors. So we showed up to the region, uh, and this is Arrowhead Island, at least that's what we're calling it, because that's sort of what it looks like on a map. We wanted to put five of these sensors out on the eastern side uh, within sight of the glaciers but there was just way too much ice for us to be able to do that. So we did some reconnaissance with the drone and to look to see, can we deploy these on foot? Can we basically hike across the island and, uh, and deploy them? But you never know in Greenland. I mean, these are pretty rocky uh, terrain. You don't know uh, what the island is gonna look like. So we came to shore and uh, the second to last thing that I want is to shoot a polar bear. But the last thing that I want is to have a polar bear eat my crew alive. So that's why we carry a rifle whenever we're walking around on land. It but it's absolutely pointless to have a rifle if you haven't been trained properly to use it. So I trained the crew and uh, everybody hit the target in the first shot. After this, uh, I had to stay on the boat, uh, but Nicole, Dana and Alexander went hiking off across the island to try to deploy these sensors. I stayed with the boat as you could see because there's a lot of ice in this area and I had to fend off as large pieces of ice came down upon the boat. If one of these pieces of ice trip our anchor, we'll end up being shipwrecked on a rocky shore. So somebody had to stay with the vessel. The idea is that these pressure sensors will be able to detect as I said, these changes of pressure. Uh, so we're basically, basically testing the method. Can these sensors properly count the calving activity of a glacier? And by using that data, you will understand uh, how fast the glacier is moving and therefore the rate of the glacier, which is directly related to the health of the glacier. So yesterday we went on this amazing epic hike in order to deploy five pressure sensors to collect this calving data over the next couple of months while we head up north. And uh, we had to cross over some major ridge lines and we used uh, some of the drone reconnaissance footage so that we could figure out the best way to get from the south end to the north end to deploy these instruments along the coastline. And uh, this was a 15 mile hike um, over across about a mile of elevation change. So we're in recovery mode right now. We are bruised, we are, um, we've got blisters, and we're covered in mosquito bites from head to toe.
We chose locations that were in line of sight of the glacier and we had to deploy it in a way um, that would be about two meters below the surface, below low tide. And so we had to approach the site and do a lead line sounding at uh, the different locations in order to determine if we could actually deploy the pressure sensor below the surface at, at low tide. We also used a uh, GPS to uh, record our locations and we also used a handheld uh, bearing compass in order to get a three-point fix also off of various uh, points of land and features in order to uh, have a backup of the location of which we deployed the sensors. After deploying the five sensors on land, we got into ALT and head out to a southern glacier to deploy the other five sensors. We had to navigate through heavy ice for 18 hours with one person standing on the bow with a whisker pole constantly pushing ice out of the way. As we wove our way closer and closer to the glacier, we found an island that was actually uncharted. It wasn't on any charts. And so we used that to deploy our first sensor. As we approached the glacier, the ice became so thick there wasn't even one square foot of clean water. And we just had to put our boat up into the ice and slowly shove our way through it. One of the locations we deployed the sensor, the ice was so thick that when we lowered Dana and Nicole in the dinghy into the water, they actually had to row through the ice. We continued on and uh, we got all these sensors out, many of them uh, within a quarter mile or half mile of the glacier face itself. We are now in foggy Upernavik and next we'll be pushing out to sea to do our microplastic survey in Baffin Bay. Thanks again for joining the uh, video blog and um, you can always make a donation via PayPal on the website. Thank you. Oh, yeah.